Good evening. Welcome to QUT Web News. Brisbane residents are being urged to brace for more wild weather just a day after the southeast received a battering. One man was killed in the storm that caused flash flooding, property damage and commuter chaos. Streets were blanketed in hail. Local residents described yesterday's downpour as a white Christmas. The Parkinson area was one of the hardest hit. Roofs collapsed and houses bore the brunt of flash flooding. Residents described it as one of the worst storms they'd seen. My wife actually saying the hail was worse than any blizzard we'd gone through and we've gone through four foot snow drifts. I've driven in plenty of storms but nothing like that. I was out underneath the sail trying to poke the ice off so it didn't break the sail and then two minutes after I've walked away it ripped down all the guttering so thank God I wasn't under it. In the most severe incident, a 42-year-old motorist was killed after a tree fell on his parked car. He was attempting to seek shelter at Hillcrest. Brisbane copped 85 millimetres of rain in just two hours. Energex crews worked to restore power to more than 4,000 homes and businesses. With more rain forecast, the Bureau says it's shaping up to be an active storm season. The warmer surface, the sea surface temperatures around our area, upper level troughs coming in from inland Australia are interacting with this moist area, warm sea conditions around the east coast and we're getting more storm activity this year. With the fresh warnings, residents are being urged to prepare early by securing loose objects around their home and preparing a storm kit. Kira Donoghue, QUT News. 28 people are feared dead after a plane crash in Papua New Guinea. The Dash 8 aircraft was en route from Leh to Madang when it went down just 20 kilometres short of its destination. An Australian pilot is among the four survivors. Police are investigating if an electrical storm may have contributed to the crash. Ongoing industrial action has caused yet another day of travelling chaos for Qantas passengers. 17 flights were cancelled and more than 30 services delayed for four hours after engineers walked off the job. Qantas has apologised to its passengers but more strikes are expected. Having an impact on our business, an impact on our forward bookings and an impact on our passengers and this is very unfortunate. We do apologise to our passengers. And the battle over pay is threatening more than just the airline's reputation. Virgin has increased staff and services to cope with the influx of disgruntled Qantas passengers. State Labor MP Kate Jones and LNP candidate Campbell Newman faced a tough crowd at the public forum in The Gap today. The candidates tackled tough local issues in the electorate they're both fighting to win. 300 people turned out to see Kate Jones and Campbell Newman go head to head. It was their chance to ask the Ashgrove candidates where they stand on local issues. One of the toughest questions of the morning was from university student Sophie Barrett. She said Mr Newman's statement that Anna Bly was a sleaze bucket offended her as a woman. Well, fair comment. Fair comment, and I'm not going to sort of revisit it other than to say that uh, over the last uh, uh, few months I've been called a lot of things, uh, and I've also been called a lot of things by the Premier in the past under privilege in the Parliament. Locals didn't hold back, asking candidates where they stand on environmental, transport and disability issues. While the candidates were civil with each other throughout the morning, they faced a barrage of animosity from the audience who were looking for answers on local policy and budget. I sent this to you about three weeks ago when you denied it being there. And secondly, I had a But it wasn't just the audience asking the tough questions. Mrs Jones made repeated reference to what she calls Mr Newman's lack of policy. Mrs Jones says the LNP candidate is using Ashgrove as a stepping stone in his campaign to become Premier. Today what we saw was Campbell Newman could not name one thing that he would do if elected as a member for Ashgrove. He chose to answer all local questions on statewide issues. The election is expected to be called early next year. Megan Lawrence, QUT News. QUT's Professor Rod Walker has passed away after a long battle with cancer. He was just 42. Vice-Chancellor Peter Coldrake says the loss will be felt widely within the university and the broader engineering and professional communities. Professor Walker was director of the Australian Research Centre for Aerospace Automation. Under his guidance, it grew into a leading research centre in all aspects of aviation automation. The university is now considering an appropriate way to mark Professor Walker's significant contribution. Emmy Award-winning actor Kelsey Grammer addressed the National Conference at the Gold Coast this morning. 
The talkback radio host from the American sitcom Frasier took part in a discussion on the future of the industry. He played a talkback radio host in Frasier, so Kelsey Grammer's advice to his audience was about the delivery. From that time on, honestly, is what I, I always assumed uh, my responsibility was, was to believe in the audience enough to think that they'll, they'll rise to whatever material you want, you want to deliver to them, and they are smarter than we think they are. And about his only real experience in radio. I guest hosted the Mark and Brian show in Los Angeles uh, several years ago when they were on vacation. So I guess that's the only real shift I ever pulled. But I managed to have four hours of talk in me. And, uh, <laughs> Later on, FM and AM personalities made up the panel, debating the future of their medium. FM veteran, known to listeners as Spoonman, has been at the forefront of merging radio with other technologies. So I think there's, there's going to be more of an emphasis in FM radio on personality and on, uh, on, on talent on the air rather than just belting out wall-to-wall -wall tunes. But the role of radio is something the panellists agreed could not be replaced. And I agree, whether it's AM or FM, it doesn't matter. We're digital, whatever we happen to be. Either way, we are part of the community and that surely must be our number one thing. We do whether we're playing music between our comments or playing ads between our comments. The likes of Hamish and Andy and Fifi Box will be gracing the red carpet here tomorrow night for the Australian Commercial Radio Awards. Isabel Rowe, QUT News. The Hindu Festival of Lights is brightening the streets of Brisbane for a second year. It's one of the largest events on the Hindu calendar. Bollywood performances, hot curries and fireworks. It's all part of the annual cultural extravaganza that is Dipawali. The Indian festival signifies the triumph of good over evil and moving from darkness to light. This is how we can bring peace and prosperity and harmony in the country. Dipawali encourages everyone to come along and learn about Indian culture. Festival goers can enjoy a variety of performances and activities. Here in King George Square, the festivities have been underway since this morning. But it's the light show at 7 o'clock tonight that's expected to bring the biggest crowd. Light represents the brightness, our life, you know, better life and the better multiculturalism, everything good. Dipawali will be celebrated in all major cities across Australia tonight. Elizabeth Mulheron, QUT News. And now to sport. The Brisbane Roar is facing a big game this weekend against Sydney FC, who are aiming for their 10th straight win on home ground. The Roar had a light training session today in preparation for the big match. Sydney player Brett Emerton is expected to be one of the main attractions on the field at Sydney Football Stadium tomorrow night. But the Raw are confident they will be able to snatch a win when the team goes head-to-head -head with Sydney. Our sort of thinking last year was that we'd go to every game trying to win it. Um, there's no point settling for a draw. The Raw are hopeful to continue their unbeaten streak to 30 matches with a win against Sydney FC tomorrow night. The captain of the Raw is looking forward to a challenge. It doesn't matter if we play home or away. We still try and have the same philosophy about the way that we play football and I think that was one of the keys to successes last year and that's going to be no different this year. Australian rugby coach Robbie Deans has announced the lineup for Sunday's World Cup semi-final when Australia takes on New Zealand. Both Kirtley Beal and Adam Ashley Cooper have been picked at fullback but Beal will have until the last minute to prove his fitness. If you're not fit and play, you get judged on how you play, it doesn't matter. So you can't come off the game and say, hey, listen, I wasn't right for that game. If you weren't right, you sit on the sideline. A few key players from the All Blacks are also back from injury, including captain Richie McCaw, Israel Dagg and Richard Kahui. In South Africa, Australia has taken the first 2020, winning by five wickets. 18-year-old pace bowler Patrick Cummins has lived up to the pre-match hype, taking three wickets for Australia. Melissa Hunter, QUT News. Time now for a look at the weather. And from our special time-lapse sky cam, we can see it's been another cloudy day around Brisbane, but not as bad as yesterday when we had those thunderstorms. Around the nation tomorrow, and there should be some more wet weather in store. Sydney and Canberra should have clearing showers. Showers also forecast for Melbourne with a top of 22. And Hobart should be wet too. Perth should have a sunny day with a top of 28. And there's a chance of a late thunderstorm for Darwin with a top there of 34. That brings you up to date with the weather. And that's all the news we have for now and indeed for this week. We'll be back on Monday with more QUT news. Until then, goodbye. Goodbye.